So yeah, Phoenix Foundation, we just recorded uh, Buffalo, which is our fourth record. Um, we did something a little bit different with this album. Well, not different for us in terms of what we do when we make music, but different in terms of making a Phoenix Foundation album, which is that we, um, me and Conrad and Luke, who are kind of like the old school guard, the old guard of the band, um, we spent a lot of time demoing and writing songs together um, at our practice studio uh, in an old car club council building in Wellington. Um, so it, it, it's interesting looking at the like success and longevity of the band and how those things relate. Um, and as we were talking about before, in terms of New Zealand bands who've um, who've released four albums, uh, it's not, there's not that many at the moment, and um, uh, and it's hard to kind of you you go well. There's that temptation to always try and be a little bit more commercial or. Um, you know, push a bit harder for commercial radio play, and I think perhaps, perhaps we did that a little bit with um, with Happy Ending, though maybe in a funny way, because we kind of made these massive, just super super layered rock songs, and it was much rockier than what we'd done before. So I don't know if that's I don't know if that was more commercial or less commercial or whatever. But that kind of that album was maybe less of a B-net record than what we've done in the past, and I think we're very conscious of never trying to make our music for commercial radio or for student radio or anything like that, trying to make the music we want, but but really not wanting to lose our core kind of fans in New Zealand who've always supported us, who are kind of people who go out and buy music, people who want to buy records on vinyl for instance, and so you know we've really gone hard, hard out trying to get the album out on vinyl this time. And, um, people who aren't, you know, we don't want to be one of those New Zealand bands where you get people coming to your gig and that's like the only gig they're going to all year or anything like that. Um, so we've kind of straddled this funny zone where sometimes it feels like, you know, we're not as we're not as alternative as, as a regular cheese on toast band, for instance. But we kind of live in that world a little bit. But then we're nowhere near as commercial as the sort of bands that get decent airplay on the rock or the edge. But we might get a little bit of airplay on rock or something like that so we kind of sit in this funny middle ground and the whole time we kind of feel like we're making the, as, as alternative as, and interesting music as we possibly can um, so we kind of you know someone's going to go oh, are we making commercial music I'm sort of you know this this record's influenced by this completely obscure piece of 70s Italian monster movie soundtrack or something so I don't know, it's a weird thing to talk about, it's definitely, it's not necessarily a comfortable thing to talk about, but it's an in interesting thing in terms of where the Phoenix Foundation sit in the New Zealand music world, because, you know, for instance, we never we never get on covers of any of the music mags, and sometimes we fail to get features in those music mags, but then we may be getting, you know, fairly large crowds to most of our shows everywhere around the country, and, and we will, we do actually sell a few records and stuff, so it's kind of like, we do pretty well, and sometimes we do better, possibly, than some commercial New Zealand bands that might be perceived of as being really popular, but we do well in a slightly different way, in a different zone. Um, so yeah, we're putting out the album on 180 gram vinyl, which is getting pressed up in uh, Czechoslovakia, I think, at the moment, so behind the Iron Curtain. Um, which is really great. I mean, I'm a vinyl buyer myself. Um, I just, I like, I like the idea that you're buying a really nice physical object, and um, I think certain certain followers of, of our music will be really keen to get it on vinyl, just limited 300 copy thing, which is being put together by um, by Slowboat Records in Wellington, which is a great record store. So, kudos to, uh, to them for helping us out with that, and also. You know, it's really great for EMI to be quite happy for us to be doing our own thing with the vinyl stuff, um, which is kind of interesting that vinyl has kind of reached that point. You know, it's now it's like people want to do it, but it's really expensive. Maybe record companies aren't so interested, but it's really important for us. It's not we're not going to sell anywhere near as many copies on vinyl as we will on any other format, digital or CD or cassette. I don't know what kind of cassette, but. You do it because you want to create an object. It's like getting a nice art book published or something. Uh, yeah, there's this interesting thing in the moment. I think I'm starting every question with, this is interesting. <laughs> it might not be, this is a boring thing about my band. Um, we've been getting 
really good reviews from England, like surprisingly good. Um, we got like five stars and then independent, um, which was, was really nice, you know, it's sort of like, I don't know, just, and, and Mojo and Uncut and those sorts of bands and um, a few things happening in England and after doing those shows with Jarvis, he played us on his show on Radio 6 and um, I think Steve Mackey played us on his, is it Steve Mackey, is his name? Am I getting people's names, combining different British radio DJs' names? That name sounds really weird to me now. <laughs> it's Lamac, Steve Lamac. Lamac, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Mr. Mackey from South Park played us on his BBC <laughs> Six show. Um, so kind of these things are like really exciting. You go, wow, we've got to, you know, we've got to go over there and do it. And then you kind of go, wow, Luke's got his kids, and you know, my wife's pregnant at the moment, and so we've got responsibilities, and we're not, and we're not a young band anymore. We're all like. 30 plus, 30, 31. Um, so you kind of, there is this sort of thing of like, you know, what if we had put out a record like Happy Ending when we were 21 and gotten that response, we'd all, you know, we'd all be squatting in, um, in the East End somewhere. If it was nine years ago, now we'd be, if we were 21 or wherever, we'd be paying a thousand pounds a month to be living in the East End. But, um, so that's the kind of thing, we, you kind of go, well, can we go over to England, can we afford to do it, do we have the energy, and, and I, think we, I think we really want to do it, and we'll try and do it this year, and, but it's, it, it's a balance of working out you know, what, what the advantages are from that, and, and it's always interesting to see how people respond to that sort of thing over here, and that um, there's, always the, there's always journalists going on about, oh, this band's really breaking through over there, because they've got this review, or that review, or something, and, and you kind of go, well, yeah, the, the review's a really good step, but it's just actually quite a little, little part of it. I mean, I'm really closely watching what happens with, um, with you know, bands that I love, like um, Conan, Conan Moccasin or Lawrence Arabia, and, um, you know, who've got some of these opportunities um, in England and in America, and, um, and just whether or not, you know, what level it will get to. But, I mean, at the same time, you know, you kind of go, well, Will it be a big success or something? But then it's like, well, is it actually already a success? Is it already a success that Lawrence Arabia's got his record out on Bella Union? He's been touring England and Europe with Beach House. He's now going off to do some shows um, in America and you know play with some great bands over there as well. And it's like sometimes I think when you're in a band, you kind of fail to recognise that you're actually you're doing it right now. You're always thinking, this is where I need to be. We need to get to that level. We need to have um, this many TV appearances or something, or we need to have this many people at our shows, and we need to play with a band like that. But you kind of then you, sometimes you just have to go, oh well, that gig we did a month ago was great. Well, I have been Sam Scott from the Phoenix Foundation. Thank you for listening to me ramble on Cheese on Toast. Um, our new album Buffalo is out 26th of April, and you want to go to www.thephoenixfoundation.co.nz where you can pre-order the vinyl or various different packages of the album and also if you want you can enter our um, design competition where you can win the vinyl um, and other such things like that so yes join us in cyberspace for the next generation of the phoenix foundation <laughs> <laughs>